So let's welcome the players for our next match. From Belarus, Arena Savalenka. Well, there's always something special when the lights are on late at night at the India Wells Tennis Garden. As this tournament always know how to put on a show. And we have a showstopper of a matchup to close out day seven with just one ranking place separating the two players. It is a tough one to call. It's the three-time Grand Slam champion of world number eight, Angelique Kerber, plays one of the rising stars of the sport. Belarus's big hitter, Marina Sabalenka. I'm Pete Hodges, and for this fourth-round matchup, I've been joined by Tina Krizan. This should be a fascinating encounter with two contrasting styles meeting for the first time. Yes, uh, what a match. Uh, I, I really look forward to this encounter. Uh, we, here we have uh, Zabalenka, who, like you said, is the rising star. What a player she is. She's one of my favorite players. Uh, to, to win Grand Slams in the future, and uh, she's got everything. She's such a hard hitter and has a big serve, has a big forehand back, and can come to the net as well. Her all-round game is, is really good. She has a good coaching team and is rising all the time, and is for the first time in the top ten. Yes, the coaches are either that you know about or her that opponent, corner, so the German three-time Grand Slam winner. What else is that you say about her? What a great player she is. It's really exciting this encounter. And as you say, Sabalenka is still in okay, 20 we have all the years of age. Things. We have, uh, I mean, if you want to challenge, make sure you say something so it's nice and clear. Coaches, they just come in from the corners here. We've got the clocks on all four corners. Any questions? No, heads or tails? Heads is the call. We do have heads. Sir? Sabalenka winning the toss and electing to serve first. That's not really a surprise. She's uh, not only a very talented player, but a very confident player as well. She'll be fancying her chances. She never seems to fear anyone on the WTA circuit. She certainly had no trouble beating a fair amount of top 10 players already in her young career, although she's still searching her first top 10 win of 2019. Well, look at that. Who thought Venus Williams would be through to the quarterfinals yet again here at the BNP Paribas Open, of course, which the semis last year. What a run it's been for the American, and she awaits the winner of this encounter. So whoever wins through this one, it's going to be a mouth-watering quarterfinal. That is for sure. Fair few fans around the outside of uh, Stadium One. There's a lot to do around the grounds here. And of course, with the big screen, many settling down just to, to catch a glimpse of the only match that's going on around the grounds right now. And it should be an absolute firecracker. As we were just saying, what a, a few years or a couple of years it's been for Sabalenka. Huge rise when you consider a few years ago she finished at. What was it? 2016, ranked 155 in the world. Now she is world number nine, and hoping to move up even more spots than that by the end of this week. She had a career high ranking, as I say. At the start of the year, ranked 11, picked up her third title of her career with a win in uh, Shenzhen right at the start of the year. I said third, in fact, the fourth title of the year in Shenzhen. But what impresses you the most? Many people talk about her power, but she's got a very good mindset as well. Anything else that, that makes you so impressed with her? Well, she's physically so strong, isn't she? She looks so fit, and look at, at her broad shoulders. She, she has a great serve, and that's obviously a big weapon in women's game. And, uh, you know, she has a very good relationship with her coach, and she's ready to learn, and she's ready to improve, and... and Yes, she, she's one of those players who will always improve, will look for improvement, even if she gets criticized a little bit, she, she takes this as, as constructive criticism, so that's, that's good about that. Well, these two nations, incidentally, met in the uh, Fed Cup in February, but Gerges and Kerber didn't play for the Germans. It was a, a big win for the Belarusians, so perhaps Kerber a chance to get a little bit of revenge for German tennis here tonight. 
been a, a steady start to the year for Kerber. Casey uh, had a very good start at the Hopman Cup with some big wins there of Muguru, the Corne, Barty and Benchich, but they are exhibition matches technically. Since then, quarter-finalist in Sydney, semis in Doha, fourth round at the Australian Open, but she's yet to, to beat the top, top player with regards to the ranking. Her best ranking win was Contivate, who was world number 20. How do you think she'll have assessed her start? At the uh, start of the season? Yes. Uh, from her point of view, probably not as good as she's able to, to play, but uh, tonight will be a good test for her. It's a chance for her to... You know, to get the first top 10 win of the of the season, and uh, it will be very good for her confidence. Obviously, Sabalenka will be very tough to beat tonight because she's the rising star and has all the weapons. But uh, knowing Kerber, she will she will see this as a challenge and will try to give everything tonight to win this match. Thomas Sweeney, the man in the chair who will look after this one. As we said, both players looking to break their top 10 duck this year with regards to claiming a win against the top 10 opponent. Weather conditions, 90 degrees Celsius, so it's, it's actually a little bit warmer tonight than it has been in recent nights and evenings. Uh, weather is presented by Dubai due to free. But the wind actually has picked up a little bit as the evening settled in. A bit as windy as it was right at the start of the event, but it has been a little breezier in recent hours than what it has been over the last couple of nights. Yeah, of course, covered three-time Grand Slam champion now, but since winning that Grand Slam in Wimbledon last year, One yet to reach a quarter-final, other than the quarters and the semis, Sydney Doha. She, she didn't finish last year strong, mm -hmm. and she took a, a couple of weeks off after winning in Wimbledon. Do you think that's she's almost still catching her tail since then? Well, that's what she needs. I think she needs time off because she has so many off-court activities that she has to attend. We will see her coach, uh, former Australian Open finalist, Rainer Schuttler, on the right. Really good ATP player. Very calm guy. Gives a lot of uh, positive advice. And of course, that's something she's had to get used to as well, having played by Ben Fisset last year. And there is another former ATP player, Dmitry Tursunov. And you've got to love their balance, haven't you? Isn't it? On yeah. court, he was quite fiery, wasn't he? But yeah. off the court, as a coach, he seems gentlemen, to calm Sabalenka down very well. Yeah, he's a very good influence Sabalenka on her. She learns from him a lot. She appreciates his, his tennis history and, and his tennis Yoko knowledge. Up. And uh, it's quite good to, to see that. Because young players these days, they, they don't appreciate you know, the, the experience so much. But it's so important to have, a play, to have people in your box who are experienced in the game and who can help you go further. Just one place remaining in the quarterfinals of the BNP Paribas Open. Who is going to take it? It's guaranteed to be a top flare. That's for sure. The world number nine taking on the world number eight. As the big hitting Belarusian, Marina Sabalenka, takes on the three time Grand Slam champion, Angelique Kerber. Both players searching for a first top ten win of 2019. Who is going to claim it? It will be Sabalenka to get this encounter underway. Tina Kreese and alongside myself, Pete Rogers, and we will talk you through. Like that. Oh. 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 tends to only really play one way. Will she make any subtle adjustments, though, for Kerber? Well, I think she'll try to play her game. She will think about her game first and then, and then uh, change in the match if, if she needs to. Sabalenka about being a, a top 10 player saying that she has to play top level tennis every single match and demanding it of herself and that's after what has been a mixed start to the year I think so many people were talking her up to really almost play the sort of tennis we saw at the back end of last year still been some very good results of course claimed the title semi-finalist at St. Petersburg as well 
Two good wins at, in Fed Cup is on top of that. And I think initially when she lost in the second round of Dubai to Bencic, 7-6 in the, in the third, we thought it's not, not the best of results. But since mm -hmm. then, Bencic, of course, going on, claiming a win today against the world number one and, and winning that tournament. And now 7-6 in the third looks like quite a good result. It does, yeah. I mean, she beat Osaka pretty easily tonight, didn't she, in two sets. And uh, Bencic is really playing well at the moment. Few early errors for Zabalenka. In fact, three unforced errors so far in this first game. Give the German first break point. Well, so it helps her out there and Jeez. makes this match so intriguing. Savalenka can hit through the defense of Kerber. Another Kerber can rush the Belarusian. will want to keep the points very long against the German. She will try to finish them off probably below five shots, which we saw in the last point. Game seven. Save the break point. Still able to secure the first game, Arena Sabalenka. First game. Such a breakout year last year. Of course, three titles to her name. Most of the success, or almost all of the success, coming in the, the second half of the year. New Haven, Wuhan, and Shenzhen. And then uh, runner up in uh, Lugano and Eastbourne as well. Of course, went deep in some of the other big tournaments. Cincinnati was a semi finalist, China Open quarter finalist. It was a big jump from world number 75 to world number 11. But of course, now very well known and there's always the danger of that second season syndrome what what are the pitfalls of, of the second season syndrome oh yes it's pretty obvious isn't it last last year in uh, new haven i saw her for the first time winning the title and she was so impressive and everybody was so impressed with her and it's this new player coming up and she's got all these weapons of course now second year everybody has studied her and they know her game pretty well so, you know, it's, uh, it's much more difficult for her because uh, the players know her. Uh, they know her weaknesses and uh, they try to exploit that. And, of course, she has to defend a few points. And now she's top ten player. Everybody can play, can attack, attack her, play without fear. And she's the one to defend, you know, to win the matches. But if she takes it as a challenge, uh, she's a top ten player. She will have to. She will have to take it as a challenge and, and get used to it. And everything we seem so far from it in terms of character yeah suggests that she's pretty fierce yeah and it doesn't look like that sort of pressure will affect her too much she's also in fact i mean in the early part of the year as i said most of her success was the back end of last year so mm. doesn't have to defend too much in the first six months the other good thing for her is that she lost in the first round of the first three grand slams last year so yeah. french open and wimbledon have a wiggle room to get up the rankings as well. 30 on. Yeah, she's got a few months to go, and uh, like you said, she can rise in her rankings quite substantially still, especially if she does well in the big tournaments. This is one of them. Yeah, 
did reach the, the third round here last year. Good win over Kuznetsova before losing to Vondrasova. Fault. Service game then from the German. One game in. As we are in the desert and it is at night, it's always a, a venue that you need to bring your warm gear to. Definitely. I suppose if you have a day and a night session ticket, you'll pack quite a big bag. Yeah, gotta have a backpack. <laughs> Savalenko over. And of course, this is what the German will try to do: work, work the point, make her play, bring as many balls back as she can, and attack the right shot, the right ball. When she's in a position to do so on the court, she's so smart, and the German is so smart, such a smart player. Really feels the game so well. Love Do you think the fact that this match is a night match, that the temperature's dropping, helps Kerber as well a fraction? With regards to the, you know, it's not as hot. The ball might not travel through the air as as fast. Probably yes. I mean, Sabalenka wants uh, fast conditions, obviously. Pick up from Savalenka because it's a lovely bit of invention from Kerber to make that so tough for the Belarusian. Mm. No, but on the other hand, Kerber she likes um, fast conditions. After mm. all, she's won Wimbledon. Yes. So um, yeah, so she doesn't mind to play in against people who hit the ball hard because she reads the game so well. Why, this is going to be a fun encounter. A big hitter against a brilliant counter puncher. Talking about being smart, this was a, a fairly intelligent shot to play from Sabalenka's point of view. They'll know each other's game very well. With regards to all the video footage and out there and what their, their coaching teams would have done and spoken to other players, no doubt. It's funny you say that. As a player, you like to speak to somebody who has played them recently, preferably in the same tournament, but perhaps in the last tournament. So you want to know how they're playing at the moment, the current form. 
And how willingly do you give over that information? Does it depend on whether you mm. like the person? Yes. <laughs> yes. Not everybody does. You're right about that. That's been a super start, though, from Kerber. Kerber. She's certainly done her homework. She always does. Kerber Breaks leads. early two in this opening set. Long. Leads 2-1. In the opening exchanges, Kerber doing a very good job. Savalenka hasn't been able to dictate as much as she would have liked. Yeah, Kerber, Kerber she will be very happy with her start. Keeping a good length, and Savalenka just making a few too many unforced errors. And again, there's the length. Mm. And certainly, early break helps, and uh, backing it up is obviously is crucial, which Kerber at the moment is doing really well. I think shots like that will hurt Sabalenka. I mean, usually that's going to force an opponent back that return, but mm. Kerber's so strong off the baseline. That time, though, too strong. And a little shorter from Kerber. Sabalenka able to pounce. That's just too powerful. You see how fast the ball flies past Kerber. Wow. Well, how did Savalenka steal that point? Wonderful bit of improvisation on the forehand bunt. Yes, the point was all about Kerber, wasn't it? She had it won right here. Oh. <laughs> Great touch. Is that going to be a turning point? It really should have been Kerber's point. Now the Germans facing great points. Mm. 
not happy about it. This time, Kerber doing enough in getting Savalenka on the run. Yes, really well played from the German. His forehand down the line was so important. Not quite fast enough, Savalenka. They were always ready on the baseline. hitting but again it's an unforced error from Sabalenka and in the end the point where Sabalenka was able to steal it doesn't matter yes that game was so important for Kerber just feel Sabalenka it's all out attack all the time isn't it yeah. did you feel she needs to add other other facets to her game well, she hasn't been to the net too much, has she? She's been working on that part of the game a little bit. There's certainly been nuances that she's added over the last couple of years, as I say, with the meteoric rise that she's had. I remember watching her a couple of years ago, and you could see the talent and mm. the raw power, Yeah. but the shots were certainly spread shall we say yes the short selection is better in general for her Let's that's why she's th she's a top 10 mm. player yes. but perhaps not tonight yet she's still trying to hit every single shot and her second serve percentage is only 33 percent she's won two out of six points on the second serve has to get that up a little bit <laughs> she's only won six out of 12 first serves as well On that second serve, has to risk a little bit more because Kerber is like a wall. Zabalenka's serve is not coming through like it usually is against other players. the unforced errors the defense and the counter punching start from Kerber has always forced Sabalenka to overforce oh dear well, let's just hope there's nothing too nasty here because that came out of nowhere and they can often be the worst 
And I think she's okay with regards to her body, which is the most important thing, but mind will be a bit frazzled right now as Kerber's able to break again. Needs 4-1. Sadly, we couldn't hear what Dmitry Tersonov said to, to Sabalenka. What do you think he would have said, Tina? Well, uh, she she needs to get uh, the percentage of the first serves uh, higher. Sec the second serve, especially, it's pretty low. And, uh, you know, she needs to... She goes for too much at the moment. She needs to work the point a little bit more. Like this last <laughs> shot, it's not necessary to go to go down the line that much and go for the line. Just make her play a little bit more because she's making too many errors at the moment, Sabalenka. And you have to change something. 15 compared to 3 only. Oh. Still, it just looks a little bit... Well, lost, you know, it's, it doesn't know what, what to do because mm. Kerber is always on the right spot on the court, reads the game so well. She can't really hit through the German. She's not used to this kind of, this kind of defense on the other side. Game with Kerber. another game. Moves to 5-1. I mean, it, it is such a fun time, isn't it? For women's tennis right now, you've got the creativity of Bencic, with mm. what she's doing out on the court. You've got the power games of the likes of Sabalenka, Osaka, and then you've got the phenomenal counter punching ability of Halep and Kerber. And I haven't even mentioned Serena and Kavita, yeah, or Venus, who of yes. course is having a renaissance here again in the Wells. Fun years ahead, but he does look lost right now, Sabalenka. And the worry as well is how far she's missing with some of these shots. Yeah. Oh. She really doesn't see the opening on the court. So likes to play pretty quick, Sabalenka, and yeah. when that happens, it can feel like it's unraveling pretty quickly, it's as rushing. it is here. Exactly, it's rushing a little bit, isn't she? It's taken just 25 minutes, but three set points here for Kerber. way to the German and Sabalenka survives for now. Oh. 
much better. The back foot. She has better variation on the first serve. She hit a bit of a top spin. The ball bounced really high. Short from Kerber, allowing Savalenka to head up the court. And three set points saved in a row. That forehand down the line is just brutal. It has been money, hasn't it, throughout her mm. career? It on the rise. Let it go, sister. Who knows if she can hold here? A bit of frustration for Kerber. Still time to turn this set around, although. Dimitri Tersonov doesn't look overly enthused. Mm. She's overcooked that one. Miss Sabalenka is challenging the call on the right baseline. It's the late call, which so often leads to a challenge. This is our first challenge to the, the, the opening set. It's just long. So it'll be set point number five for the German. It's a sweet strike. And even if she loses this game, there's certainly been some better tennis from the Belarusian. She was standing in the court at this point, wasn't she? Dictating till the end. Just lost her length of fraction. Oh, no. Oh, no. Just wonder whether she thought. Kerber was going to challenge on the previous ball and, and maybe that caused the lapse in concentration. Yes, it was quite a loose shot. <laughs> that is just incredible tennis. Reads the game so well. Is such an intuitive player, Kerber. Knows exactly when to turn it up. So fast on her legs as well. I don't think Sabalenka could hit that backhand any harder or any earlier, and it still came back. Oh. Well, that is a super set of tennis from Angelique Kerber. We we're talking about the contrasting styles, but at the moment, it's Kerber's counter-punching ability that is winning through. Takes the opening set in just 30 minutes by six games to one.
battering break for Sabalenka. No, something has to change here. So he did play a, a bit better in the final game of that set. Was down love 40, got it back to Juice. Kerber has been a, a, move, a movable object right now. An unstoppable force of Sabalenka just hasn't really been able to find a way through. No, to be honest, I didn't expect the first set to go this mm. easy for the German. I would say the incredible stat in it was that Kerber made just three unforced errors, but yeah. that's what Kerber is when she's playing at her best. Gives so little away. Sabalenka still giving away the points. Yeah, that shot there just didn't feel like she needed to go full out. No, she's not aiming for anything mm. on the court. She's just hitting the ball really hard without even thinking much. And these are things that, back in the last year, that she was making the assessments on the right balls. Yeah. Striking from Kerber. Do you think there's an element with the, the more experienced players like Kerber that want to keep the youngsters down in matches like this? Oh, yeah. I mean, she came, we can see she came to this match fully prepared, didn't she? She studied her opponent and really wants to win, show that he, she is still the boss. Look at this forehand. It's yeah, 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 unstoppable. Kerber. Kerber showing there are different ways to attack. She's now actually only hit one winner less than Sabalenka. And hit by far, far less unforced errors. And that's why she's in control of this match at the moment. Yes, we see it here. The statistics you were talking about, unforced errors, obviously way too many for Sabalenka. But look at this stat. Second serves won on Kerber's side, 78%. Isn't that huge? I mean, she's had problems with her serve in the past, and she's really improved that, that side of her game. Obviously, she's been injured. She had stomach, stomach muscle problems, back problems, shoulder problems. That really stopped her with, with training her serve. But after she, she got herself really fit... Oh, no. No. After she got herself really fit, she... She got rid of these problems and she could work on her serve much, much more. And, and here is the result. I mean, big difference in this match. The less said about that smash, the better from Sabalenka. Although, is it, is it always easy coming out the night sky? It's not. Uh, it's not, but, you know. It was, she didn't have to move a lot for it. It was, it was a no. relatively routine overhead. Yeah. She's rushing too much. Mm. She needs to take a few deep breaths and just stop a little for, for a little bit and, and think a little bit. This is it. Again, the, the assessment there. Kerber getting a good deep hard ball down the middle. And Sabalenka just needs to, to realize when those balls have come to her, but she needs to play a neutralizing shot. Well, this will be a great lesson for her, no matter how mm. the match finishes tonight, but uh, if she wants to improve her game, if she wants to go really deep in biggest tournaments, she needs to study this match very closely because beating Kerber would be another stepping stone for her, especially for her mental, mental uh, approach to the game. Because Kerber obviously is very difficult to beat. She's, a, like you said, great counter puncher but also attacks the balls at the right at the right time so she doesn't give you much at all and then she's so fit <laughs> she can run until tomorrow she never stops well, that's the thing isn't it in, the, in this match shot selection Kerber has got bang on and 
that's what makes the difference between great players and good players, the shot selection. They have the right shot selection at the right time, hit the right shots, sense the game when they need to change something. Kerber is very intuitive, like we said, and she knows exactly when she needs to turn it up a little bit or be more aggressive or be less aggressive, be le more defensive. She knows exactly. That's what makes her so good. Something with the slice as well at the moment, Tabalenka, but... And there's the intelligence from Kerber, the fact that she's using that it's shot. Two challenges for me. Oh, it's a super passing shot. Okay, Sabalenka got a racket to it, but strength of the German on the stretch. Core strength is just something else. Yes, that's what she worked on really hard. And that's what she says makes a difference in her game. That's why she got to all those great results. She won three Grand Slams, and uh, it's purely to her fitness. And plus, she's so professional off the court and on the court. One of the most professional players on tour. Play. Yeah, there's no doubt, is there, with regards to Kerber maximizing mm. her ability. They like to compare her to the past German champion, Steffi Graf. She was also very professional, didn't spend two minutes at the site more than it needed to be spent. Just went about her business, just like Kerber does. Obviously, she's now 31 years old, and you know she has a special routine after the match. How she goes about after the match, eats, <laughs> eats you, well. Do you know what this routine is? Yes, I think she eats well. She has a nutritional specialist. Uh, she eats well. She takes an ice bath, which it wasn't in my days, but now players do it a lot. It helps to regenerate the body. And then she has a massage or maybe some treatment if she has a problem. And then she goes to the hotel and rests and prepares for the next match. So she is very, very professional. And you can't argue with the effect of all that professionalism as she picks up another break and continues the momentum that she picked up in the first set into the second set to love. So you can't argue with the results either. Three-time Grand Slam champion now. It's just the French Open that's missing with regards to the, to the Grand Slams and career Grand Slam. Yes, I would say she likes fast surfaces more, doesn't she? Mm. She likes sort of hard courts and obviously grass. She doesn't have much top spin on her shots. But of course, the way that the sport is at the moment, yes, you never the know. quarterfinals of the French last yeah. year, being her, you, you never know. Mm. <laughs> she can win many more. One thing that is missing, though, off the, uh, the CV is a Premier 5 or a Premier Mandatory title. Just four finals, but never won one. And I'm sure she'll take the Grand Slams. <laughs> Phenomenal, the movement and the hitting from Kerber. Yes, and in this point we, we saw, which she, I mean, each shot like this one, she stepped it up a little bit. She just feels the game so well. Double. 15 in the game. Rye smile. 
Chance then for Sabalenka to get the break straight back. Still couldn't resist. But go for the line. <laughs> Would have been much easier if she decided to put the ball, let's say, half a meter to a meter inside the court. But I suppose this is what Kerber does to you. Yeah. Pushes you to the limits. This time it's Sabalenka's turn to turn the point around. And finally stops the rock. No reaction from Dmitry Tursunov. It does get the break back, the Belarusian. And still leading 2-1. Strong between Tersonov and Sabalenka. She said all of about two words to him. We didn't quite pick up <laughs> what those two words were. I think it was in Russian. Yeah. And he barely responded back. So they pretty much just sat in silence. I think she's very, very angry with herself with the way she's performing tonight. She didn't expect this, and we didn't expect this either. Her shot selection is. It's not good at all. She's going for it too much, making too many er unforced errors. In fact, 27 so far. And she, I, I had a feeling she's really so unhappy with her performance that she couldn't even talk to her coach. <laughs> so angry she was. I mean, the, the other thing as well, that he's been sat on the side, Tursunov, and we've barely seen a reaction from him. Yeah. When, when She's won a point or anything, which is, is unusual. Usually she's very supportive and animated. And so it feels like something's uh, maybe a fallout of somewhere yeah. before even perhaps coming onto the court. Or he's just not been very happy with, as you say, the shot selection and her performance so far today. Yeah, let's hope it's a second. Uh, mm. You know, she, he's surely not happy with her, with her performance so far. She hasn't lost the match yet. She, it, she can get back to 2 all now, and who knows now in the second set. But he's certainly not been happy so far. But usually it's such a positive relationship. Yeah. When he comes onto the court, he's able to calm her down or get her going. Either way, maybe it's worked. What do you love? Yeah, love yeah, service yeah, holds. So, well, maybe Tersonov knew what he was doing with regards to not saying a word. What, when somebody's that angry, what do you say? Anything you say, it's just, just going to light the fire, isn't it? So maybe he was right just to let her mm. steam a little bit in silence. But, I mean, <laughs> you know, calling the coach on, you feel it's a bit of a waste because yeah. if he's not going to give you any advice. Yeah. She didn't vent at him either, didn't let anything out. But... She was whinging in silence. She's let it out <laughs> on the court in that game. 
Yeah, Kerber's yeah. just dropped her level though as well. Fourth double fault in this set already. Again, puts the pressure on the, on the opponent when it's needed. Schüttler, he's looking quite content, isn't he? Yeah, not showing too much down at emotion or being too animated himself. And I'm sure he's pretty happy inside with how his players performed so far tonight. It's 3-2. Oh, of course, Kerber has had the, the best of this encounter, but no break of serve now with regards to her being up. And Sabalenka, you just know she's always dangerous. She can suddenly find her game on her racket. really has to dig deep now, Sabalenka. First ace of the match. easy I suppose off the forehand it is for Kerber well yes a little dink like that will not be enough against Kerber is it she's too too fast
Oh, it's well played. 40, Might be going back in behind as well there. That was a tough volley that came at her quickly. Mm, she's done that a few times in this game. Quite successfully. Super body serve. And whatever is happening with her coach, Dmitry Tersanov, she's done a good job of just putting it behind it. And keeping her focus. Second set very tight now. Much better attitude at the moment mm. as well for Zabalenka. No. Oh, well, well. She's in complete control of this match. Well, about 15 minutes ago, Sabalenka has just started to make her play a few more balls, a few less loose shots. Kerber's game has certainly dropped a level. Mm, this could be a turning point in the second set. Game. Wow, would you believe it? This didn't look like it was going to happen. Sabalenka playing with a lot more discipline. Still no reaction from Tersanov. Sabalenka breaks for a 4-3 lead. Reading a couple of things online, with, not official, but it was a very strange exchange that, that Sabalenka had with Tersanov all of a few games ago. And 
Yeah, she seemed to ask a question, and we think that she asked, could you please support me? Because we say that he's not been supporting her at all throughout this match. And Tersonov gave a one-word answer, and that answer, we think now, is no. <laughs> That's a very strange answer. If you ask me, no matter how bad your player is playing, mm. as a coach, you are there to support. And this is not the right way to, you know, <laughs> to communicate with your player, that's for sure. It's very strange. Yeah, it's, it's highly strange, but it also points to something that's happened before the match. I mean, can you imagine Schüttler saying that to Kerber? Mm. I, I can't, I'm sorry, but I can't. But we can't read too much into it because no. we don't know. And uh, I'm sure it will be asked in the press conference or, it says, or, or next time she is interviewed. If she will give the correct answer, mm. that's a good question. But the strange thing is, yeah. since that yeah. coaching call out, Sabalenka's looked like a new player. <laughs> and so you could argue it's brilliant coaching. <laughs> No coaching is brilliant coaching. Clever. <laughs> now thinking with real clarity, Sabalenka. Say she's been playing with far more discipline in this set. Brought the margins in. And there's a bit of creativity. And Sabalenka has won five out of the last six games. And now Kerber serving to stay in the set. Fifteen. Interesting. On the other hand, that Kerber doesn't call the coach too often on the court. I don't remember seeing. Do you remember seeing seeing her coach on the court in the past? Do you? Um, Kerber's coach. Very rare. Yeah, she doesn't doesn't like to do that. I think she likes to figure out things on her own. Again, you can't really argue with the results for Kerber. Challenge here from Sabalenka. Not the best. She just overcooked that one. Yeah, this yeah, time, not going to challenge. Yeah, it's a love hold for Kerber, so we'll at least ask the question of the Belarusian as to whether Sabalenka can close this set out. 5 4.
Well, it didn't look like this was going to happen, did it? All of, uh, half an hour or so ago, Sabalenka was getting outplayed, but ever since that coaching exchange, she's been able to turn the match around. Serving for the second set now, 5-4. Her serve has been working better for her in the second set. Oh, yes. And again, there's the margins that we weren't seeing in the first set. Still no reaction from Tursanov. Be a reaction here from Sabalenka if she wins this point, though. Game Super second, second serve. serve, and there Sabalenka. is the reaction. Clenched fist looks a completely different player. Sabalenka, coach still looks the same, not happy. But Sabalenka must be delighted inside. Takes the second set, Well, plenty of drama in this encounter. We've seen plenty of good tennis too. What are we going to get in this decider? It's one set apiece. One set shootout. As much as we've been talking about Sabalenka raising her game, certainly Kerber's levels dropped. Yes. Double faults, in particular, early on in that set didn't help. Somehow goes hand in hand, doesn't it? One's level goes up, one's level goes down. Uh, forehand down the line is not working for Kerber, which is quite worrying. It's her, it's her shot that usually gets her out of trouble. So what should she do now? She certainly doesn't want to lose this first game. I mean, it's so important to, to get the momentum on her side with her serve. She's not Thanks positioning her feet too well. 15, 15. Point being given to Kerber. To be honest, those were a couple of unforced errors on the forehand side. 
She can't afford to make any more of those in this game. Oh, there's another one, but Morgan is breaking down. She was so strong in that first set, if you remember. Just three unforced errors. There's been three unforced errors in this game. And that's Savalenka, who moves in front, gets the break at the start of set three. First game, final set. I'm going to stop saying there's no reaction because I don't think that's going to change mm. in this deciding set, even if Savalenka goes on and wins this set six love. Much better set from Sabalenka, a couple of aces. Much more serves, one second serves, one 70%. And big drop for Kerber, she won 78% of first serves in the first set, and that was a big difference. Also, less unforced errors for Zabalenka. One more winner, and that made all the change. She needs to keep it going here. She's really unstoppable at the moment. Definition of a Jekyll and Hyde performance so far. From the world number nine. Oh, well, like the point that Kerber was winning again and again in the first set. Yeah, she's missed five forehands early in this set. She's not feeling the confidence in the shot at the moment. Oh, that's just outstanding. It was some return from Kerber. But Sabalenka then took it to another level. Good placement of the serve. Really went for it. This time not for the line, but inside the court. Game, Sabalenka. Backs up the break to love. And you just hope and wonder... Where well, the coaches out there are thinking, well, I tried my hardest to turn matches around when I was with the player and came on and gave this great speech and nothing <laughs> happened and the player didn't turn it around. Maybe I just should have said, no, I'm not going to do anything. Well, you know, obviously the player has to perform on the court and it's the best if the player figures out. Uh, but a little bit of help wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't I mean, be bad. <laughs> it's either utter genius or, <laughs> or something a little more. I'm sure a psychologist would have a few answers. Mm. exploiting that forehand side, isn't she, Zabalenka, and it's working. The other thing that was happening there in the first set was that this ball here from Kerber was better than that. It wasn't going as short. It's allowing Zabalenka to get around the ball and step up the court. Just the quality and the depth of Kerber's shot isn't what it was. It's a nice chance for Zabalenka. Kerber. Miss Kerber. Mm -hmm. 
And Rarity have his turn to call Rania Schuttler on. Sabalenka leading 2-1 though in this deciding set. Ist, ist doch scheißegal, was passiert ist. Stopp, stopp, stop, warte, warte, warte. Stopp, stopp. Es ist doch scheißegal, was passiert ist. Jetzt ist der dritte Satz. Hey, du stehst jetzt nah an der Linie. Du spielst. Dann stehen Meter hin, aber du schlägst. Was du jetzt zur Zeit machst, du spielst jeden Ball einen halben Meter hinter, hinter die T-Linie und sie kann drauf gehen. In dem ersten Satz bist du gegengegangen, hast gegengehalten und hast sie bewegt. Jetzt bewegst du nicht mehr und sie kann in den Ball gehen. Das ist der Unterschied. Guck mal, tough im Kopf. Beweg dich mit deinen Beinen, halt dagegen. Du bist die erste, die Longline spielt. Okay? Komm mal, du holst hier das. Du holst hier das. Auf geht's. Okay? Wie im Anfang. Ist scheißegal, was passiert ist im zweiten. Weil du sie dazu gebracht hast. Okay? Komm mal, hol dir das. Auf geht's. Jeden Ball gut bewegen, dagegen halten und sie bewegen. Sobald sie steht, spielt sie gut. Wenn sie, wenn sie sich bewegen muss, spielt sie nicht mehr gut. Okay? Genau, du musst schlagen. Du, hast, du, du spielst deinen ersten Aufschlag mit 87, 90. Hack den ersten rein. Komm, auf geht's. Hopp. Well, one of the many reasons we like having you in the commentary box, Tina, is you can speak a whole load of languages. And German is one of them. So I'm going yeah. to ask you what, what was said there. I mean, it was fascinating seeing mm. the emotions from Kerber. Yeah, she's very unhappy. We were just saying that she doesn't call the coach much on the court, and obviously she's not feeling good at the moment. She seemed to be venting at him initially. Yeah. So what was she saying? Well, she was very upset about the second serve, that, she's, that her opponent hit so many winners, but he just stopped her. He said, stop now. Stop. You let her do it because you hit the balls really short. You hit the balls half a meter away from the, from the service line. And in the first set, all the balls were longer. So, you know, you have to keep her moving. If she, if she stands, she plays well, but she doesn't play as well if you keep her moving around the court. And uh, he also said, you have to put more on your first serve. It's, it's too slow. Lost a bit of length. Yeah. She was very, very upset about the second set, and he said, "Stop now! You just don't worry about what happened in the second set. It's the third set now. You got this. Just be strong in your head." Oh, miss for, for Kerber, as we mentioned earlier on, hasn't had a big win really yet in 2019. Both players searching for their first top 10 win. Actually, neither of them have had a, a top 20 win this year. Though, other than Kerber, who did beat the world number 20 at the time in Doha, Contivate. Saw in the first set. She has to try to get them deep the balls like the coach said. It's essential in this set. She did that so well in the first set. Losing confidence right now. It's the world number nine. Sabalenka but again, the ball was too short, wasn't it? And an easy, easy put away for, for Zabalenka. This has been when Sabalenka has struggled. But the match at the Australian Open against Anna Simova. Anna Simova's length was exceptional. Oh, 
it was actually a lot, a lot of the majority of the attacks initially were down the middle of the court, and some over before then opening it up. But that has been when Sabalenka has struggled, depth down the middle. Miss Kerber is challenging the call on the left far sideline. The ball is called out. That's a good challenge. Call over to replay the point. Love 15. Just really seeing the ball well at the moment, Zabalenka. Have to ask you, have you ever seen a coaching relationship like this on the court before? With regards to Sabalenka and Tursanov? Well, you see all sorts of strange relationships mm. off the court. Sometimes you see it on the court as well, but off the court certainly you see much more than on the court because obviously there's been times where coaches have walked away during matches yes walked away completely mm. off the court oh, oh great wow that is unbelievable that's what she needs right now Maybe this is the shot to turn the match around. Look like Sabalenka's point all the way. Look at the angle. Let first serve. Turner from that position from Sabalenka. A pretty good serve from Kerber into the body. So much on this game, it feels. The really unique thing with the, the coaching situation is that usually when you're, you're seeing a coach leave the court and things happening in and around the match, it, it's when the player's struggling and, and, and things are going off the rails. It's, it's not happening with Sabalenka. She's playing great tennis now. It's, it's funny to say, but it can fire yeah, up the players, Sabalenka. especially if the coach leaves the court. It's, it's funny mentality. Again, I'd say that a psychologist would have an answer to that. Sabalenka leads by four games to one. Right now, though, she's in the zone, Sabalenka. Breaks again for a 4-1 lead. Double break now, Sabalenka. There you go with the, the winners and unforced errors. It's 
all been on Sabalenka's racket as so many matches are. It's the big change up there though is that if you remember the first set, Kerber was plus four with regards to more winners than unforced errors. Now she's minus four. Yeah, and certainly Sabalenka's winners are rising in numbers. Oh. I mean, that is just a Indeed. rocket. On the move as well. Yeah, she's going after her forehand, definitely. After Kerber's forehand. It's not working. For Sabalenka, if she goes on a win this match, Andrew Krasny will interview her straight after the the encounter. So I, I'm I'm wondering what Andrew Krasny's thinking right now as well with regards to what questions he will ask. Mm. I presume he'll probably take the safe route and and <laughs> maybe not ask her about what was said or not said. And more focus on the brilliant tennis that we've seen. That was actually hit with such an ease. Good attention here for Sabalenka as the, the finishing line draws a little closer. Second serve missed by some distance. It's Sabalenka's turn for her serve to let her down. Saw it in the second set. Kerber hitting a couple of double faults in a game. And the match Sabalenka turned. It's Sabalenka's turn. And it's a bit of a gift. Kerber gratefully accepting the gift, though. Getting one of the two breaks back she needs. Perhaps a chance for her to get back into this, into this third set for Kerber. She holds the serve here. We know what a fighter the German is. Has shifted. That's exactly the right way. Keep her moving. It was her coach's advice when he came on the court after the second set. Break was good. 
Yeah, Sabalenka not wanting to challenge, knows it's caught the baseline. Curse of the double faults, two double faults from Sabalenka. And from there, Kerber hasn't looked back. Backs up the break. It's down to just the one game. Sabalenka's turn to respond after losing the last two games. Missed that one. She has. Love Could have easily dropped this ball, but decided to hit a volley. Game and Kerber is back. New balls, please. Well, what is going to happen next in this match? Meandering one way, then the other. Just when you thought Kerber was Four out of it, all. she breaks twice, and almost in the blink of an eye, it's four on the third. Mm. Sweet strike. I mean, is this all about Sabalenka right now? I mean, we have talked about the depth and the length being key for Kerber. Well, yeah, she's missed a few uh, relatively easy shots, didn't she, Sabalenka? Contest. Mm. A strange one at times. 
regards to what's been happening with, of course, Sabalenka's coach, but also on top of that, Sabalenka just looking all at sea first set, couldn't find the court, mm. then playing fantastic tennis, and then all of a sudden, she's lost it again. Mm, uh, yes, a few unforced errors creeped into her game in the last last two, three games. And, you know, Kerber took a chance. She just She's such a good player. She's going to go for it. The depth in her shots is better. And then with that, with the depth, Sabalenka still has the talent to punch holes. That's absolutely crucial to German's game at the moment. She needs to keep the balls deep in the court. in a row for Angelique Kerber. What a competitor she is. And that's Sabalenka's turn to call her coach on. This will be interesting. I got there, you know, uh, he sort of said, if you want to be a champion, show it now, you know, work it a little bit, work the points more. Obviously, she's made too many arm force errors in the last few games. It's a bit more positive than the last time he came on court. And, you know, this uh, certainly is a test for her, like we said earlier. If she wants to, she's already a great player, but she has such a potential to become a really, really great, great player. And uh, this is tonight the chance to prove it. That's beautifully done. And of course, Sabalenka herself said recently that she needed to show a high level all the time because she's a top 10 player now. Hasn't been all the time from start to finish in this match. Certainly been a lot of good tennis. Mixed in with the unforced errors. And still has the capabilities of holding here and turning the match around again. Again, good serve and the return was a bit too short. Movement around the ball. 40, and I think even if there were two Angelique Kerbers on the court, that one wasn't coming back.
Classic Angelique Kerber working Sabalenka over. Again, she's leaning into that forehand, really putting the body weight into the shot. Two points away. Great defense from Kerber. Made sure she got Sabalenka to play one extra ball. And somehow, the German has got to match point. Point, wasn't it? <laughs> really gutsy shot. Look at this stretch. making her play another ball, another shot, match point number two. Oh yes! What a turnaround in set three for Angelique Kerber comes from a double breakdown to knock out the world number nine on a night of high drama. Reaches the quarter-final of Indian Wells for the fourth time in her career. The second year running, but that only tells half the story. Defeats Sabalenka 6-1, 4-6, 6-4 in an hour and 43 minutes. Yes, what a match. A lot of ups and downs, uh, but Kerber came up on top. What a great fighting spirit she has, doesn't she? She came out of nowhere in the third set. She was down and she came back and uh, really didn't take much. When she was back, Just you knew she was so dangerous and what an achievement for her. She's so happy. What a turnaround tonight. The first set was quick and decisive. The crowd was really happy to see that kind of a performance. You must be thrilled. Yeah, I mean, I think it was a good match. I started really well. She played well in the second set. And the third set, I was just trying to coming back, fighting for every single ball. And I mean, it was a lot of up and downs, a lot of emotions in court. But thank you guys. I mean, you get me through. And I'm so happy to be back. Working with uh, a Grand Slam Finals, Rainer Schuttler, your new coach, what kind of advice did he give you? What kind of insights did he help you with and give you some kind of confidence? Or was it more tactical tonight? 
You know, I think um, he can give me, like, you know, the feeling on court, how it is to feel, with, to play with the pressure, uh, with the nerves and everything. So it's always good to have someone like him in my team. But yeah, I'm, I'm just happy to be through. I mean, it was a thriller at the end, and it's great to be in the next round. Beautiful shot making through to the quarterfinals, taking on the legend Venus Williams. You have an edge against her. What are your thoughts on taking on Venus, who's also playing great tennis here? Yeah, I mean, she's a champion. What she's playing in the last few years, months, it's unbelievable and she's for sure an inspiration for everybody of us and I mean I will go out there, try my best again and I think it will be a good match. She's a champion and you're a champion so we can't wait for that match. Well done. Angie Kerber, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for her. That is a mouth-watering quarter-final and I think Kerber said it there. A topsy-turvy encounter. I mean, when you consider Kerber was 6-1-2 love up, we yeah. thought it was going to be done in, a, in about an hour's time. And then all the drama with the coaching situation with Sabalenka, but then seemed to spark her into life. She then goes and wins that set 6-4, goes up 4-1, two yeah. breaks, yeah. and yet loses the match. Yeah, Amazing. Unbelievable, and the statistics don't tell us how how exciting this match was really. Kerber turned it around in the third set, like you said, down 1-4, kept fighting for every single 